Shall we pray? Vapete da pa kapoda, yande pa 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 kamba brakata pada, apepembo toko pa brakata kapada, aide te kapa pa mba brakata kapo, apapa pa mwa kapa pa mba bata katada, amrakata kapodia, yande kata kapa mrakata kapo, apapa wa pa 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 nda kapa po, yande te 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 kapa mrakata par, yata tanda pa mrakata kapar, yata taka pa mrakata kapar, yata te te nde na ka, yata te te nde ya 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 ka, yamba pa pa kapori, yata kapora kata kapari, amrakata kapampora, atata kampora tata, amrakata kampora te, yande kapo, yande kapa kwa, akata kampa rakata ta, atata kata tata ka, atata kata ta, atata ta kata ta, atata ta ti atata ta ti 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 ta, at
Fellowship is a fellowship. A papa, 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 a Da 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 da
dio, da 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 dio, da 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 dio, da 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 dio, da 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 dio, da 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 dio, I I know. There is one, there is one from the rock. I know, I know the one can flow out. I want to test it. Ida da 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 Wanda Papodia, he had a couple of Wanda Caporia, he had another dog, 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 he had another
Patatia, Papa, 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 Papa,
We come to the regions of light and life. I angulate. I expose my members. Find us fresh and find us fresh. Oh, eternal spirit. Find us fresh. Find us fresh. Find us fresh. Find us fresh. Make sure you are holding somebody. Was somebody by your side? Give us to eat all bread of life. All bread of life. Give us this day our daily bread of life. Don't stop, don't stop. There is bread. For this is the bread. This is the bread of life. And this is the house of bread and the house of light. It doesn't matter how shattered, it doesn't matter how, how broken you are. If you come to this place, there is light, there is bread. Come to the devil, come to the devil, come to the devil. The meal is out.
I am the bread of life. Give us to eat, Holy Ghost. Oh, 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 wapa, papa, papa, tada, papa, wapa, papa, 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 There is a player where mortality can be swallowed up by life. Ni go fly I I can hear the rhythm of the eternal life.
In Jesus' name. Job 41. Money from the rock. Oil from the flinty rock. Honey from the rock. Oil from the flinty rocks. By life. Impossible things, impossible people becoming things. Plain that the man saw that was persecuting the believers suddenly became Paul, the apostle. How? How? Is my life. Is my life. <laughs> Satan thought that he has done the greatest damage to the church. God told him, wait, wait. There is something, there is a card I have not played on the table. It's the card of life. Lions roar. Is inside. What is making them roar is not on the is not on the outside. There is nothing. There is in Jesus name how was Mary Madeline saved by life say by life Is my life. How do you explain that the Gentile world yeah, that had no business with the promises of Abraham whatsoever suddenly they were now brought in and engrafted? Say by life. God knew that there is a life that had the capacity to transform even the worst of sinners. It doesn't matter how wretched and poor. How can the gospel be preached to the poor? How can sight be restored to the blind by life? It's life, it's life, it's life. God and Job began to have a discussion. And in verse, in chapter 41 of Job, God began to give a description of a being which in this context represents a kind of person. Huh? He said, Canst thou draw out Leviathan with an hook? Are you looking at the scripture? Or his tongue with what? A cord which thou lettest down. Do you know Leviathan? Yeah? The skin of Leviathan, nothing can penetrate it. No sword can penetrate Leviathan, nothing. If you want to fight it, you only have to target the eyes. Let's say that this is a representation of a kind of a man. Your prayer life is down, so down, you are dead, buried. Verse 2. Can thou put a hook into his nose or bore his jaw through with what? With what? You know what the horn represents? Eh? What does the horn stand for? Power, power, power. What power do you have to tame Leviathan? Next verse. 
Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Will he make a covenant with thee? Will thou take him for a servant forever? How? Oh my God. See, I want you in this prayer section. Eh? Target somebody you know that you have preached to. Eh? You have done many things and the person has refused to give his life to Christ. There is deeper life. The water you were fetching was on the shallow level. In this, in this, in these three days, eh? in this bedpan, trust God to fetch from the depths and give it to the person, whether the person is here or not. Leviathan can bow and cry. God can strike the hardest of men. The hardest. The hardest. Yeah? The men that have died. He says, speak to the dry bones. Prophesy to them. <laughs> oh, Pariasuza Patu Kapura. Pampototo Potopo Kapoto Papa. A Papo Kapoto. How will dry bones live again? Stay by life. Dry bones, there is hope for the dry bones. Why? There is life. There is life. There is life. You are going to cry to God in Jesus' name. That hard part, that thing you have tried by all means to overcome, to conquer. Eh? All this while it has not died. It has refused to come alive. Eh? It's like this Leviathan. The skin of Leviathan is filled with scales. Eh? You can't strike a, a sword and it will pierce through it. The hardest of men can be crushed by the finger of God by life. Suddenly, God will transform them from inside out. Suddenly. And you suddenly begin to find out that this man that used to persecute the church, that doesn't want to hear anything God, Something is beginning to happen to him. I'm trusting God to a few of my friends and brethren. Can you trust God with me? Maybe you don't have, I can give you their names. So you, maybe you can help me intercede on their behalf. Let life flow. Pastor Perfect, it doesn't matter the, the state of any nation. The antidote that God has for it is life. All God has to do is to smuggle life into that place. He said, wherever the river flows, what? Everything there comes alive. We are going to pray. I cry for the river. There are so many parts in my body that need to be conquered. Oh Jesus. There is more.
Oh les gars, ça tout hâte. Black to me. Why have you been repeating the same thing for five years? Why have you been talking about the same thing for three years? Black to me. Come on, 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 I want to make progress with you. In Jesus' name. I don't want us to be praying this prayer in limbo. This has to be personal. Can you identify two, three, four things in your life that the Holy Ghost have not yet succeeded in breaking through it? I don't know about you. I'm too stubborn. I'm telling you. I'm too, st I'm too hard. There are things the Holy Ghost has been pointing at it. I don't know how the thing still escapes. How does it escape? We will come to another season, the same thing, they will still be pointing at it. Is he not bothering you? He's bothering me. He's bothering me. He's bothering me. See, stop looking away. No, let's not stop praying for. Pray for them. No, no, no. Look at your own life. There are things that you may not even be able, you may not even be bold to tell somebody about it. Daddy was teaching last week on, in the school of prayer. He said that the, the prayer room eh, is the place of undressing. Uh, it's time now to undress. Holy Ghost, look at this place. I've been patching it. I've been patching this place. I have not allowed you to touch it. You are saying, you, I want to cut through this place, but every I have, there is an iron plate I used to seal that place. It's sealed with iron plates. Cut through it, cut, 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 identify it. I undress, I undress. Holy God, I want you to make progress, make progress in my heart, Holy God. Oh, ah, 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 control me, control me, control me, control me, control me, ah. Oh, 
in our meetings the teams are they are lines upon lines God made a promise there was a promised land the destiny that was upon the man Moses was that he will carry this man to that land he told him God told him you are the one to take these people to the land but there was a death at work very close to the promised land he is about to finish his business, finish the call of God upon his life. Death acted up. Simple instruction. 
go and speak to the rock. And I will cause water to come out for the children of Israel to drink. He didn't know that there was death. The death had been finding a way to manifest itself. Brothers and sisters, if God doesn't deal with this death, it will disgrace us tomorrow. Hey. Hey. Mighty man, Samson. Mighty man. What was the problem? The death that was at work. The death. There was a death at work that was not mortified. It was not swallowed up by life. Then one day something happened. That death. Yeah? That death took away his calling. Let's not say we have the Holy Ghost. We have the Holy Ghost. We can pray in tongues. It's an advantage for us. Now we can grow. That is a manifestation of the songs. Songs have to manifest. If we don't manifest, then it means that death has finally caught up with us. I thought a man like Samson, a man like Moses, death will not be at work in his members. How much more me and you? We are going to cry to God. Wherever death is hiding. Have you seen a dead man before? Yeah? A dead man is heavy. Very heavy. That's what is happening to us. Many of us are, we are too heavy for God to carry us. Introduce your life. I don't know how, but please don't leave me like this. I 
Not your last life. I know. Not your last life. Oh, oh. Da 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 da. 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 Teach my soul to win. 
name of Jesus. I will quickly have our seat. Please, if you have testimonies, make it out to the front. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Brother Jerry, please, if you have testimony, make it out to the front. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Please, can we settle down quickly? Amen. Um, I've come out to give God all the glory for all he has been doing for my family and I. And I thank him so much. I'm here to testify of his goodness and his sustenance and his mercies, his grace, his favor upon my family, upon my mom, and upon my life. Since I came here since January till now, I have not lacked anything actually. And I thank God Almighty, it's not by power or by might, but by his grace. And I thank God for the well-being of my mom and how she's doing the new job she got. She said that they are paying her well and she's doing good. They are feeding her and they are taking care of her. So I thank God also for my family, how they are growing in the Lord, and I'm grateful to God Almighty for everything. I came to say thank you, Jesus. And we put our hands together for Jesus. Praise the Lord. So I'm um, here. Your name and your testimony. Okay. My name is Uzoma Mary Ann Chinelu. So I'm here to thank God for his goodness, for his mercies upon my family. I want to thank God for the, for the health of my dad. Though he's not fully recovered, but I'm still trusting God for a um, miracle upon his health. Then I've been trusting God for phone for a long time. I even went, like, I summoned on faith. After one meeting we had in Nyot, I went to a phone store. I prized the phone, like, I got the prize and all. Then I was trusting God for the money to get the phone, but it, it wasn't forthcoming. So two weeks ago, my phone just spot, like it went blind. I couldn't use it. So last week, Friday, I went home. Like I've been thinking, how will I compose my plea so that my sister can maybe assist me with a new phone? But then, as God may have it, as I got to her place, the other one was like, he has been trying to reach me. I said, my phone has not been good. I said, okay, if you need a new phone, I can get one for you. And that same day, that same Friday, he called. Um, a phone store, and he was like, I should go and pick up the phone. So I want to thank God for the new phone. And <laughs> Also, the Lord has been faithful. Um, last year, last year, when the, uh, when the list came out, like the graduate list came out, my name wasn't there. I, I know I did everything I supposed to do, so I was worried. My pastors and everybody was, 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 was praying for me. As God may have it, December last year, a new list came out and my name was there. So I'm here to say, may the Lord who has done this, may all glory, all honor, all praise be ascribed to him and him alone in Jesus' name. You can do better than that. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. My name is Chinemelum Joshua. I want to appreciate God, um, firstly, for my life and especially for this commission. Definitely, I would say if not because of revival, but I don't think I'll be standing by now because where I was coming from, like where I came from was very dark. But thank God for this commission. And def um, secondly, I want to thank God for adding another year to my life. Praise God. I want to put our hands together for Jesus quickly. Praise God. Um, I want to thank God for the life of my family, my brothers. Um, the last time I testified, after the testimony, it wasn't up to a week that my brother testified about. They promoted him at his office and all that. <laughs> then, um, second, there was a program with my brother that has been preparing for since um, November last year. But somehow, it keeps, something keeps coming up. It wasn't going through. And most times, when we are praying, we just see that there are a whole lot of, there was a massacre and all that. So after a while, I prayed for the reason. I prayed and prayed. So I just let meet Papa. I just told him, he said, ah, Go, God bless you. And he just said, he was saying it like, he just asked me a question, I answered. He said it 
as a way of an extra statement. Say, now you are your, you know, and I get power now. So I just said to amen, no. And I left. So I want to thank God for the success of that program. But during the course of the program, I had a very serious issue. Everybody was even scared. They were like, this girl, ah. So that's the point, because the person I had the issue was with was like the second in command. He was the chief of staff. But I refused to apologize because I know I did not do anything wrong. And I remembered what Pastor Chuka said that he did not apologize. So me, I said, me too, I will not apologize. So, <laughs> so everybody was like, this small girl, go and say, so I said, for what? The papa said, now we get power. So me, I know I refused to do anything. But he just gave, and he gave a direct order to everybody's security that they don't want to see this girl here again. I told them, tomorrow, I'm coming back to this place and nothing will happen. So I want to thank God, though, how God resolved that matter. The tomorrow, I carried my bag. I went to the place. They were looking at me. But from the gate, the gate lifted up its head. And I just marched in. Everybody was like, ah, this girl, be like, say, get power. I told them, Papa, say, get power. So I want to thank God for the, because when it happened, it was like the last straw. Because I know that place, everybody has been like, since you don't want to follow us and do the things we are doing, you can't stay. I told them, they say it's my inheritance. So, so I want to thank God for the victory. And since that day, people have been like, ah, no, now they pray now. Show us. Okay, I told them, yes, if you want to know something, come, I'll show you. We have Revival Hub, and I have a God that answers. He will give you power like me. So I want to thank God for that victory. It was, it wasn't easy, but I know Papa's word went ahead. He said, no, now get power. And God honored that word. Also, I want to thank God for the life of my mom. Finally, for the life of my mom, her health has been improving drastically. Like the sugar level, most times the BP, nothing, all those funny things. No one comes up any longer. She, most times I do cook, I intentionally cook things that she's not meant to eat. And I tell her, please eat. And she will eat, and nothing will surface. And to God be the glory in Jesus' name. And we put our hands together for Jesus. Praise God. My name is Eze Yamarachi, and I'm here to testify of the goodness of God. I want to thank God for how he has sustained me all this while in, you know, in Beterama. I want to thank him for all the people he has used to correct me, cancel me, and all that. I don't take it for granted. And then I also want to thank God for my siblings. Yes, especially my younger brother. Um, he gained admission. Um, that was around January. And then he's in Oko. So I just want to thank God for how he has been pulling him and for the work he has started in his life. I say, may all glory be unto him in the name of Jesus. And we put our hands together for Jesus. I pray more and more testimonies. If you are trusting in God for anything, because me, I personally, personally key into that testimony for the phone. If you are trusting in God for, for anything. Anytime they give testimony like this, key into it. It will become a reality in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Our Bible reading. First of all, I want to thank my father for the privilege to read God's word with his people. We'll be reading from Romans 7. Romans 7 and Romans 8. Romans chapter 7. Are we there? So I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Are we there? Okay. Verse 1. Or do you not know, brethren, for I speak to those who know the law, that the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives? For the woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she is released from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband lives, she marries another man, she will be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she has married another man. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ, that you may be married to another, 
that is to him who has raised from who was raised from the dead that we should bear fruit to God verse 5 for when we were in the flesh the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit to death but now we have been delivered from the law having died to what we were held by so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter verse 7 what shall we then say is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law. For I would not have known covetousness unless the law has said, you shall not covet. Verse 8. But sin, taking opportunity by the commandment, produced in me all manner of evil desire. For apart from the law, sin was dead. Verse 9. I was alive once without the law, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was to bring life, I found to bring death. Verse 11. For sin, taking occasion by the covenant, deceived me, and by it killed me. Therefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin, that it might appear sin, was producing death in me through what is good. So that sin, through the commandment, might become exceedingly sinful. 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. 15. For what am I doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. 20. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. 21. I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. 24. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Chapter 8. Are we there? Chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk after according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Verse 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. 3. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. Verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh but those who live according to the spirit the things of the spirit. Verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity with God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, 
He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit which dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. 14. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are sons of God. 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. 16. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. 18. For I consider that the sufferings of these present times are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Verse 20. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. 22. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also... But we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. 24. For we are saved in this hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? 25. But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. 27. For he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. 29. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What well, then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. 34. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. 
Let's open our Bible. I want to honor our Father. Let's just pray in 30 seconds. Just release from your from the depth of your spirit. Release life. I can't hear you. Thank you for the blessing of a king and a father. Amen. In Jesus' name. Daddy, thank you for this opportunity. Um, can we do Psalms chapter 1? Psalms chapter 1. Let's start reading from verse 1. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of discomfort. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. I want us to underline this. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Next line said, And in his law, which law now? The law of the Lord. Are we together? Yeah. Doth he the word meditate day and night? Okay. Now, having this in this place, yeah, um, King David, I believe, is writing like he's writing like Apostle Paul. Yeah? Are we following? You know? uh, he has established the premise upon which he wants to make the utterance he wants to make. It is this is the actual thing he wants to say. No, the next verse, verse three. This is an attempt to describe the believer. Amen. Uh, this is an attempt to describe the believer. So he has to set the premise and began to explain to us the operational facilities behind which the believer functions. Uh, are we together? He, he set the premise. He's telling us, the person I want to describe to you now, this is the secret behind his function. This is the secret. This is the actual... Um, system that powers his oppression. So that when you look at him from the outside, you can be able to understand really what is responsible for the way he looks, what is responsible for the way he acts. Yeah? Are we following? We already established that his delight is in the law of the Lord. And previous verse before that one was able to tell us that there are certain places that this one doesn't go to. Are we following? Yeah? That there are certain places you can't find him. That there are certain things you can't find him doing. That there are, there are certain utterances that will not come out from his mouth. Say he doesn't sit in the seat of discomfort. He doesn't walk in the way of sinners. Are we following? Yeah? Now, in verse 3. Verse 3, please. He now said, And he shall be what? Like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That what? Bringeth forth his fruit. I want us to underline because we are going to look at this one after the other. Amen? And he shall be like what? A tree planted by the river's side, the rivers of water. Now, remember, this is is trying to represent a believer with what? With what? Are we, are we together? Yes. Huh? So, this tree he's describing is just substitute this tree with the believer. Are we following? Yeah? That's why he said, blessed is that man. 
So he's talking about a man. Are we together? Now, back to verse 3. Say, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. All right. So, underline like a tree. Underline planted by the rivers of water. Underline that bringeth forth his fruit. Underline his season. Have you done it? Yeah? If you're with me, say amen. amen. The next thing is began to establish. He said what? His leave also what? Shall not what? Does it look like something that happens to a tree? Yeah? It looks like something that happens to a tree. We'll get to that point. Amen? Next, he said what? And whatsoever he doeth shall what? Can we have another translation so that we look at that um, last part? Probably NLT. Okay, NLV still said the same thing. Next, another one. Okay, NLT still said the same thing. Do you have another? Okay. I like this one. He said dropping leaf. Never dropping a leaf. Never dropping a leaf. Amen? Now, the verse where we read, he said that there is an oppression that is um, at work in the life of this man. And he's, he called it the law of the word of the Lord. The law of what? The Lord. It means that there is a government that is actually at work in this man. Are you following? There is a government that is at work in this man. Let me recap something that daddy said. Okay. He said, there are two purposes of eternal life. Or he mentioned two purposes of eternal life. He said, one, to deal with, the first purpose is to deal with death produced by sin. That is, according to, because of the fall. Are we together? Secondly, to achieve the things and the agendas of God in our lives. First, to deal with what? The death. Remember that you already said that there is actually a need for eternal life prior to the fall. Yeah? Are we together? Part of the things that man, man lost many things in the fall. But he only lost as many things as he, that he was in charge of or he already had before the fall. Two of us understand what we said. Man fell, right? When he fell, the only things he lost were the things he had when he fell. The ones he didn't have, he didn't lose it because he has not, he has not yet gotten it first. Are we, are we together? Yeah? So, this eternal life was a destination. There was a journey that man was supposed to continue in and then finally get to that point. Are we following? Yeah? So, that life had the capacity to deal with the death that happened as a result of the fall. First. Let the person that, let that dead be taken away first. Remember, God had an agenda. And due to the fall, the agenda of God truncated. Huh? He, stopped, he stopped because of the fall. Now, the introduction of that life first deal, dealt with what? The death that was introduced. And then went ahead to kickstart the agenda that God already had. Are we together? Uh, does it make sense? Now, what it means is that there is, there is something that God actually wants each and every one of us to become. There is a tree that we are supposed to look like. Are we together? Huh? Just the same way you come to a forest and then you see different trees. Huh? 
the desire of God is also that when we come to a place like this, if, if it is true that a believer can be represented with a tree or as a tree, yeah, then are these two people the same? Yeah? Even though they are both fair in complexion, are they the same? There is even a slight difference in their hair color. There is a difference in their DNA. Literally everything is different. So, if this were to be a tree, this is a different tree from this one. This one is different from this one. This is different from this. Huh? Now, imagine that all of us now made up a forest. Are we following? Are we together? There is a plan that God had and that plan in, contained in that plan is that there is a kind of man God wants to achieve as a result of the introduction of his life in that person. Someone distinct and unique. Someone different. Just the same way all of us are different. Say, so whom he, he, he called. Yeah? There is a, a predestination. There is a man God knew for new before now. Are we following? That man, God has not forgotten it. In the light of the scripture we read, yeah? give us King James again, please. In the light of that scripture, there is a kind of a tree that he is hoping to see when he looks at that river, or he looks at that forest, or he looks at that man. No, now what happened in the fall is that that tree was now the light that was supposed to be given to that tree, the movement we were making to the point where we will receive that life so that we can now become that unique person God wants us to become. Yeah? That, that progress, that process was truncated. Now, what happened in the fall is that the fall had different impact on us. Two of us. Are we following? So that what has to be dealt with in you can be different from what has to be dealt with in me. Right? Yeah? While they are different, yeah, it means that there is one operation of life yeah, that has the capacity to remedy every of these things. But the mechanism and system and degree per time to which that operation is supposed to run is different in different people. Are we following? Yeah? How then can one be able to come to the point where he's able to interact with the life that he that has the capacity to make him become the actual person. Remember, this is a tree, and when we talk about a tree, you have to dissociate it from a seed. True of us. Huh? A tree tells you that years has come in. True of us. Is it not true? Huh? So um, if there is a seed, the seed still has processes that it's going to be subjected to before it becomes a tree. Are we following? So, that's why when we gave our life to Christ, the same process uh, from kindergarten stage was kickstarted. That's why when you are born again, uh, you are like what? A baby. A process is kickstarted. The process of restoration. And from what that he was saying yesterday, you find that he said, the same way that the process of the fall was progressing, huh? 
the impact of the fall was continuously deteriorating. In the same way, the process of recovery is just like trying to reintegrate something that was differentiated. Are we following? Does it make sense? Huh? Something has already been differentiated to zero. You are trying to reintegrate it back. Let's say back to power 10. Will it happen once? No. But if you just integrate once, will you get to the original point immediately? Now, this is the challenge. The challenge is that we, we, receive, we got born again, eh? and then this is now like they have just integrated once. Expecting that the integration will continue, we will not stop there. And now hoped that by whatsoever means, eh, we will mature. We will never become like the tree that is planted by the riverside of water. The agenda of God that is that we will one day appear what? Like the tree that is planted by what? The riverside of water. He now said that that tree is such that it bringeth forth its what? fruit in his season. So the man that was ju that just gave his life to Christ and remained there, will the process of life continue? Has he touched eternal life? Yes. But there is a deeper life. Not deeper life as though it is different from the one you received initially. No. But just the same way if we get admission. Yeah? There are people in the same course. Some people are in year one. True or false? The same course. The same department. Some persons are in year one. Some are in year two. Some are in year, year three. Some are in fourth year. Depending on how many, how many years they read your course in the spirit. <laughs> Amen? Because depending on the impact of the fall on you, they, in the spirit, they, can, they know the curriculum you are supposed to complete. So that it will be counted that you are now a graduate in the first degree. There is, there is an extent to which you can do certain things. Even though you have progressed from year one to year two to year three to year four, depending. There are people, their courses, is, how many years is radiography, sir? Five years. Now, for you that your course is five years, can you get to the fourth year and get, begin to rejoice? Have you graduated? Have you seen it? Eh? There are people that their own is six years. It is the Holy Ghost that knows. He shall be like what? Like a tree. There is a tree that God is hoping to achieve after these deeper life lectures. The question is, are we, am I like a tree? Or am I like a grass? You can ask yourself now, are you like a tree? Okay, let's even assume you are like a tree. Are you planted by the rivers of water? Okay, let's even assume you are planted by the rivers of water. Yeah? Do you bring forth your fruit in season? We'll get to this point. We'll, by the Holy Ghost, we'll try to drive it a little. Say, okay, let's even have, assume that now you are bringing forth your fruit in season. Are your leaves not withering? 
we have many believers. Yeah? There are no leaves. There are leaves. They are, they are like deciduous plants. Do you know what is deciduous plant? Huh? Deciduous plants are plants. I remember in Introtech those days. They said deciduous plants are plants that shed their leaves annually. <laughs> yes, it's in the Bible. Is it, are you not seeing it? Their leaves does not wither. There are people... Now, remember, these are oppressions of death that have its rivers in the oppression of life. Are we following? Are we together? Remember, we said... These are what oppressions of death. The withering of leaves, the shedding of leaves is an oppression of death. Remember, for every oppression of death, for every, from where we read, there is a scripture we have been traveling with, Romans chapter 8. Yeah? He said, there are two laws. First law is what? The law of what? Sin and death. And then there is another law what? One law swallows up the other. Okay, let me just show us. What is the nature? The nature of this life. What is the nature? Let's first establish that this life that we receive is like a seed. Because we started joining from Psalm chapter 1, where we saw a tree, and we said we can't be talking about a tree if there is no seed. Are we together? So we have to factor in the process of growth and different conditions around germination. Then we can now talk about maturity and then the point where it comes out to become like a tree. This is the man that God was looking at and he said that there is such a thing uh, that the creation are expecting. He called them what? The sons, he said that the earnest expectation of creature does what await the manifestations of the sons like they are like it is like a tree. Even nature was told, was given the promise or a prophecy that certain kinds of men are going to appear, they don't share their leaves, irrespective of the conditions that. The oppression of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is such that does not make provision for the shedding of leaves. Why will a ministry move, 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 and then begin to die? Whatsoever thing that happened is not eternal life. You know, sometimes it looks as if there is a peak. Yeah? There is a point where you can now get to. It's like a climax of your work with God. Anything from that point is now like a turning point downward. You know turning point now. They say at turning point, everything is equal to zero. You now begin to nose dive. Nose dive. Nose dive. Nose dive. Is that the oppression of this life? Why then do we make certain excuses? Huh? It now looks as if there are certain seasons that we know that if, if I enter this season, I, this so, so, so sin always, I always fall for this sin. It's as though God understands. Does God understand? Mustek. Does God understand? There is the law of the Lord. Huh? That's what it is called in this Old Testament. But when we now go to the New Testament, we now found out that the law of the Lord is actually what? The law of the Spirit of Christ. Because we now understand that the Lord is that Spirit. And now said, we are what? The Spirit of the Lord is. That is what? There is liberty, there is access, there is, there is blossoming. Whatsoever thing that is powering that spirit 
as long as that spirit is there, if the spirit excels in strength, and in the place where there is weakness, the spirit likes it, eh, so that he can show his strength, the same law should be at work in my members. So that at wilting stages, at wilting times, that law will be activated. First thing to understand. Okay, if we read Mark chapter 4, let's establish that this eternal life is like a seed. It's like a seed. Mark chapter 4 verse 1 to 14. Mark chapter 4. And he began, go to verse 3. Hacking, behold, there went out a what? Okay. And it came to pass as he sowed. What was he sowing? What was he sowing? Some fell by the wayside. And the fowls of the air did what? Next verse. And some fell on stony ground. Where it had not much earth. And immediately it sprang up. Because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, I want you to be marking all the things that both the sun, the earth, mark, mark them. Yeah? Because these things are, they are serious coordinates for us. Amen? Are we together? If you are with me, say amen. amen. But when the sun was up, it scorched, it scorched. And because it had no root, say no root. Say no root. It withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruits. Next verse. Can we go to verse 13? Verse 13. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And know, and how then will ye know all parables? Okay. Now, what did he say? What did he say? The sower so where the word. So what's the seed? The word. Are we together? Now, John chapter 1. John chapter 1. From verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Are we together? Are we following? Are we seeing something here? Huh? Okay, next verse. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Next verse. Can we read together? One to go. What is he talking about here? The word. If you go a little back, what do you see? The seed. Are we together? Now, now for you to understand really what is happening, that there is a progressive work of transformation that is going on in the life of the lady. The same way the seed that is planted in the soil eh, begins to germinate is the same thing. The life we receive is like the same seed. There is a tree ahead that God is hoping that he will see. And then what he, what he, what he distributed out eh, was the seed. Like the story of the sower. Are we together? Now, what we are seeing in this place is that there is a work that the, the Lord is doing in our heart that we have to yield to. What he's doing in your life is different from what he's doing in my life. This emphasis part time is different. We are in different classes, different departments, different lecturers. Eh? Now, I don't mean physically. Eh? Because you can have one like in a university, you can have a lecturer that teaches many departments. Is it not true? The same thing also applies here. I mean, different curriculum. Are we together? Different curriculum. So, every, any attempt to try to use, to import another person's curriculum and begin to follow it, you will truncate the work of God in your own life. You will not get to the deeper life, the deeper part of that life. 
you will find out that you will become another, another kind of tree. There is a shape you will see. When you look at that shape, you look at that tree, you say, this is palm tree. How? The same way God looks from heaven. And he can tell, he says, hey, that's, that's OJB. There is a shape he has already seen. You know, if Pastor JB continues this part of life, eh, then this is where he's going to come out. First thing about that life is that it cannot die, it cannot end. That life we received, it can't die, it can't end. John chapter 11, verse 24. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Next verse. Jesus said unto her, I am what? The resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Next verse. Can we read it together? I want to go. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? That life can never die. Can die. God trusts the life he invested in us so much. He knows if we continue in this path, there is an end. He says, surely there is an end. The expectation of the righteous shall not be God. There is an end. God is working out something through our life. Forget it. No matter the shape you are seeing today, there is something God is working out. God is working out something. No matter how bad that life met you, there is, that, the, the, there is no amount of darkness that can suffocate light. If you can increase the intensity of that light, eh, it will break out one day. There will be no darkness. He like, said the light what shines in darkness. And what happened? Darkness cannot comprehend it. No matter how bad you we are shattered and you came, we have seen we have seen people messed up with all kinds of things. All they needed was what the life to enter them. When the life entered, it started working, started working, started working, started working, it started working. Small, small. The seed you just threw into the ground. One day you come back and you see you see something has risen. One day, one day is just time, time, time. See, sometimes Satan will come and deceive you and tell you you are not making progress is a lie. What did you receive? Did you receive eternal life? That life can't die. Something is happening. That you can't feel it in your soul doesn't mean it's not happening. No. There is the mingling of the spirit. Eh? That's, your spirit is aware that something is happening. Your spirit can bear witness. Sometimes to awaken your consciousness, you need to ascend high. And your soul will feel the impact. There is the government, the government of the soul is given to the spirit. The, the soul can be cultured no matter how hard it shows itself to be. The soul can be cultured by life. It can be cultured. It can be cultured. No matter how bad it was. No matter how bad you came. Eh? No matter how cracked and shattered. All you have to do is to stay and ensure that you do what? You have life. If that life enters you, it can't die. It will keep progressing. Number two, it cannot be corrupted. First John chapter 3 verse 6. That life cannot be corrupted. That life cannot be corrupted. It can't be corrupted. Whosoever abided in him, what? Can we read this scripture together? I want to go. Abided in him, sinned not. Whosoever sinned had not seen him, neither known him. Next verse. Can we read together? I want to go. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is. Even as he is. Whose life did we receive? 
Whose life did you receive? We already established that that word is the seed and this seed is the life. Yeah? And I said that in that life was the light of men. And he said, whosoever had little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth what? Righteousness is what? Righteous. Even as he is what? Righteous. Next verse. Can we read together? One to go. He that committed sin is of the devil. Are we getting it? There is no, there is no way to, there is no mixture. There is nothing, there is nothing ambiguous about it. Eh? Light and darkness are not friends. There is no union. Eh? If there is any darkness, he said, he that committed sin is what? Of the devil does this origin the place where he's throwing his life is not from the life of God why he said for the devil does what seen it from the beginning the same oppression are you getting it yes he said for what for this purpose the son of God was that he might next verse can we read this part together want to go Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Wait. The life we receive cannot be corrupted by death. It can be corrupted by death. Not in any way. It is superior to death. Anytime it means death, it swallows it like the way the that serpent, the, the, the staff of Moses swallowed up the other ones. That's how he swallows it. It will swallow it up. Mortality will be swallowed up by life. That death eh, can be swallowed up. Will be swallowed up. If you see sin in, in, in the life of any man that's said he has eternal life he subscribed to another law that is not the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus ever he sinned then it was not that life that sinned it, it's like saying God sinned this has to be in our consciousness I say and he cannot what sin why because he is born of God can a goat be an, a lion? Can a goat one day become ant? One day a goat now turn into a tree? It's not possible. This is what you have to put in your consciousness every time. See, even sin, if sin knows, if Satan knows that you have this thing in your consciousness all the time, eh? It will be very, very, it's impossible. In fact, it's, according to the scriptures, it's impossible for you to say. The life we received is a very deep life. We trust God to bring us deeper so that we have been in year one, year two, two for too long. Let's, let's know what is in the next curriculum. There are higher things that we have to be educated there are higher matters in this life that we can exhaust it throughout our days here on earth. Next point. This life can reproduce or multiply itself according to its kind. This life. It can reproduce or multiply itself according to its kind. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 8 and Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10. Just give us Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10. Okay. Isaiah 66 verse 8. Say, Who had had such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall what? Shall what? Or shall what? For as Zion as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her child. Now, it's important for us to know that 
the system of the system by which this life reproduces is not a normal process is filled with pains and pangs this life as powerful as it is eh? if it wants to reproduce or multiply it doesn't go through a normal process Because what has to be bettered has to be powerful and potent enough to still be like that which is producing it. So that what is born will also be able to overcome the world. Anytime you see this life is at work, trying to replicate or reproduce itself, it is not usually very sweet or smooth. It's filled with Things. It comes with a lot of groanings and travails. That's why for you to actually bet something by this life, you have to also subject yourself to what the pains and the groanings of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus, which is groaning. If that spirit is groaning, how do you bet things without also having to pass through the same rigor of pain? Are you seeing it? The challenge is that we want to reproduce many kinds of things but without passing through pain. Whatsoever thing you give birth will not be according to the kind of life that cannot sin, that cannot die. Whatever you give birth to will not be able to overcome the world. Why? There is a pain that it has to pass through. There is a process for its birth. There is a process for its reproduction. When it reproduces one, it can, it can multiply itself. Say, can a nation be born in one day? Can something be better out of a man eh, that has the capacity to stop the works and the operations of Satan through a generation. One child. One man child. How can a whole generation be brought into a dimension in God? A move of God. How was it the child bettered? By groanings and travails. Anyone that wants to bet something different from this way, eh, you can give bet but it cannot be a man child. The dragon will chop the head off. This life cannot can conquer the highest oppression of death. This life. Next point. This life has the capacity to conquer the highest oppression of death. In John chapter 10 verse 10. John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief cometh not but to what? For to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Say, I am come that they might have what? Life. And have it what? That they may have it more abundantly. Now, this life is not afraid of the, the destructions and the extent to which death has caused havoc. It's not a, it's not he's not seeing it why it is never afraid of death no matter how bad you came shattered yeah? they carried you in a wheelchair and all that and brought you if that life impacts on you no amount of death yeah, can quench its oppression is there an addiction in your life and you know that you have tried many times don't succumb the life you have inside you have the capacity to conquer it all you have to do is to do what pressure go deeper in that life 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 anytime you go deeper in that life then you will touch another layer that has the capacity to conquer whatsoever thing that satan has brought out whatsoever oppression of death that is active at that point it can conquer it what is happening the tree is imagine the tree is imagine is imagined. It's just a matter of time. God will look 
and he will find the tree planted by the riverside of water. One day he will come and he will find out that the same tree that has been failing to bring down bring its fruit in seasons, eh, that the fruits are now beginning to abide. The fruits are abiding. This life, finally, this life flows and flourishes under certain conditions. There are conditions that allow for the possibility of this life to continue flowing. If it must conquer the things that Satan has brought up in a territory, in a life, huh? if it must conquer it, the conditions that we allow for those possibilities, for those deaths to be swallowed up, those conditions have to be met. No matter how powerful a tree is, the day you wanted to plant a seed, you needed a soil. Is it not true? There is no point a tree will ever grow and then you stop needing the soil. Do you know the problem? We have many people that we are planted. They grew up and they left the soil. It's beyond, it's beyond just, it's beyond just being in the soil. There is the right soil that has the capacity to allow for the nutrients that you need to be supplied to you part time. Not all seeds do not flourish in all soils. There are certain soils that have the capacity to power your the ordinations and the calling in your life. If you are taken away from that soil, my brothers, something has gone wrong. It's just a matter of time you find out that death will start working again. It's just a matter of time you find out that the leaves will begin to wither. It's just a matter of time. The same plant that was actually being able to produce certain kinds of fruit in season. Oh man, we are seeing it. The tree will begin to go down. The root will begin to get short. The waters can come up again. The leaves will wither. Can we cry? And tell God, plant us by the riverside of water. Plant me, plant me, plant me. told you people that that there are three levels of revelation as he borders on the matter of life. Anywhere you see eternal life, it is better now um, for the purpose of clarity, you can go through the scriptures many times and in several places where you see the word life, it might not mean all the same thing. And I don't know why pastor is sitting at the back, but while you were teaching us yesterday, you made a profound point by distinguishing for us at least four kinds of life as, was, as, as is identified in the scripture. That is the life that you will see in the scripture, it will be bios. There is the one you will see, it will be suche. The, there is the one you will see, which is the one that, there is the one you will see, it will be an order of life. The, the one we're talking about is the God kind of life. When man was created, I apologize for this.
Mmadu owe do oyiwo. Jesus. So I might be talking small, small. Let me con- <laughs> let me conserve my energy. Amen. 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 Okay, we are trying to get into the picture of the kinds of life that that is captured in the scripture. So it's not all the time that you see the word life in the scripture, whether it's in the old or the new. That it means the same thing. Very, very important. Very, very important that you know. There are two things now that I want to say. Number one, concerning this matter of differentiating between the kinds of life that can be captured in the word life in the scripture. What the word life in the scripture in several instances mean. If you go to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter is it not chapter 2? The scripture said there, and the Lord God breathed upon man and the breath of life, and he became alive. That, that life is that breath. Suke is um, best described in scriptural context as that breath of life. Say after me, the breath of life. The breath of life. That is what makes you alive as a human being, as a human being. Now, that life that man became alive in the book of Genesis chapter 2 is not the life that we speak about when we talk about the deeper life. The concept of life in scriptural, basic New Testament discussion. Say after me, New Testament. Say after me, New Testament. Say after me, New Testament. Mr. Jacinta, what is New Testament now? So New Testament is New Covenant. It means that there are two covenants. Now, um, it is new. It is new because of, because of um, a few things. Number one is because of the fact that I don't want to say it's new. I'm just being careful. I don't want to say it's new because it came later. Because there are several things about what we call the new covenant that is not actually new, new. Uh, You will notice that many things about the new covenant, in fact, the new covenant is founded upon faith. And when the writer of the book of Hebrews was referencing the matter, he said, the law that came 400 years after You know, God encountered Abraham and told him that your children will go into captivity. And 400 years later, I'm going to bring them out. Now, the law that came 400 years after, of course, over 400 years after, the man that is writing in the book of Hebrews is trying to make an argument. He said, how can the law that came 400 years after now have more authority than faith that came 400 years before it? So he's trying to tell them that even though you are thinking that the laws of Moses is superior to the instructions of the new covenant, that I'm trying to tell you that the new covenant is not something that actually came later. So for the Jewish man, for the man that is not yet born again, that is being ruled by the power of sin, that person... His all of his understanding of the things of God is what we call old. And all of your relation until you cross over to what is powered by, by Christ, by his blood and by his sacrifice, we just call them old. Old in the sense that God doesn't want to use it anymore. Old in the sense that God doesn't want to. New in the sense that this is what God wants to use now. Not necessarily new in the sense that um, it came after. There are several things that God began to do now, began to use now, 
that is not necessarily new, but God by his ordination and for several, one or two other reasons decided. For example, if you read the book of Ephesians chapter 1, the scripture said, even Gene Hebrews chapter 1, the Bible was saying in the book of Ephesians, sister, are you with me? Where are you now? Are you still at office? Now, if you go to Ephesians chapter 1, the Bible said, spoke about many things that God decided to do from the foundation of the world. That means there are things that happened after the foundation of the world. Then the manifestation of that thing that God decided to do from the foundation of the world came later, came after the other one. There are things that happen, and then after that, other things happen. And God is telling you that the one that happened later was actually his original plan. Are you now following me now? Uh, just because he came later, it is within the human context of experience. That means we experience the old before we experience the new. And it is because of our experience of the two covenants that made us call it old and new. Not necessarily because in an objective sense that the first one is older than the second one. Because you can't say that. The author of the new covenant is actually the author of everything himself. And several things that he spoken about the new covenant was such that, hey God, several things that were spoken about the new covenant were spoken as if it has happened. Revelations. The lamb that was slain, when? Meanwhile, we thought it's 2,000 something years ago on the cross that it happened. Are you following me now? Many, many other things. The purpose that God has proposed in his heart before the foundation. Everything before the foundation. But when God began to put it to work, Mr. Caleb, I saw this young man. I thought he was a young man. I didn't know he was an elder. Very old. I asked him his age. I was shocked. William, this is your brother. What's your native name? Okay, you don't have native name. I will give you one. Give me one native name. Let me be fast, William. Where are you from? Where are you from? Okay, Kalabahim. He's a quiet boy. Huh? Somebody say in Yanabas. What does he mean? Do you know who knows? Huh? Owana? What is the meaning of Owana? Huh? Uh, light. Ah, uh, Owana. Ah. Uh. In Jesus' name. So the life that we received as human beings, that one that God breathed, is suche. That's not the one we are talking about. The plan of God is that after receiving suche, there is another tree in that garden. Are you getting the point? Yes, sir. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Takwa mafa. Eh? Prosper. Eh? Ah, I can't him prosper. <laughs> when man, God created man, hmm? and let me face you so that you will collect something if you leave us now. Unkiji kiji. You hearing what I'm saying? Hmm. Yes. 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 <laughs> Man received suke. That's not. That is suke is to bring you to existence. When we talk about life, we are not talking about existence. Are you with me? Yes, suke brings you to existence. Zoe brings you to experience.
That is why somebody can live for 80 years on this earth. He doesn't really know God. Because you cannot know God outside of his life. And according to the book of John chapter 17, verse 3. Can you show us John 17, 3? Sister Goodness, or should I call you Pastor Goodness now? Which one? Huh? <laughs> oh, the fire where you pour yesterday, still they burn everywhere. What is this? How many of you felt the fire? The... You see what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Keep it up. If you do it like this, you are consistent for like um, three to five years, you will gain mastery. Are you getting the point? Yes. yes. And that's how we do here. One day, one day, one day, one day, the day you do make up, I give you mic. Let me not. Let me not say my plans. There is no, there is no, nobody can be idle here. Anything can happen anytime. I can call Sister Jacinta to teach us tomorrow. And if you refuse to teach, all of us will sit down. Service will not hold that day. We will on the gym, put the camera on you, leave you. <laughs> How can you be eating, eating, you are not exercising? You will die. and all that. That day will be separated according to our calling. And all that. Let's read verse 3 together. One, two, ready, go. Can we do it again together? Not all of us did it before now. One, two, ready, go. And this is like eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And this is life eternal, that they might what? No. And this is life eternal, that they might what? No. So, is, you can best say it like this, educate that this is life eternal to know. To know who? To know God. Are you seeing it now? So why Suke brings you into human existence, it takes life from God to bring you into the experience of God. And I want to say it this way so that you will find out how serious it is. As far as God is concerned, you have not started living until you have his life. Have you ever witnessed? Have you ever evangelized before? How many of you used to be an evangelist? You used to preach to people to give their life to Christ. Especially village. My brother, are you an evil man? You like this. No, are you an evil man? You just go somewhere before. Hey. So. Those days, there is what we used to tell people when we go for evangelism. We tell them that there are people that are alive, but they are dead already. Is it not how we say it? Yes. That if a man is not born again, that he is alive, but he is what? Dead. But he is alive. That means that there are two kinds of life and there are two kinds of death. There are two kinds of life and there are what? Two kinds of death. Are you learning something already? Hmm? The life you had when your father gave birth to you is different from the life you had when God gave birth to you. When your mother gave birth to you, that's the first kind of being given birth to. When you got born again, God gave birth to you. That is what we now call being born again. Are you getting what I'm saying? At being born again, what God did is that he gave you his own life. Are you seeing it? 
With your human life, you interact with natural things. With God life, what do you interact with? You are with me. With that eternal life. The reason why we added eternal and the reason why eternal... Listen, listen. Are you with me? If you are with me, so far say amen. amen. When you hear the word eternal, it is not the most important thing in that sentence. The most important thing in that phrase, rather, is actually life. Not about eternal, but remember our song, Eternal, Eternal, Oh, I want to live eternal. Uh -huh. Eternal, Eternal, What do you want to do? I want to live eternal life. Oh, my Savior. When you want to connect your people, remember you. Oh, remember you. Oh, yeah, when, when you want to connect your people, remember me, oh, Lord. We need to sing it one more time. Eternal, eternal, eternal. I want to live eternal. Akagi. I want to live eternal life. God save my soul. I want to live eternal life. Oh, my Savior. When you want to call a trophy, remember me, Lord. In Jesus' name. Very powerful song. But if God waits for that day when he wants to collect a few to confirm, you are finished. If we needed to wait for that day, it's over for you. <laughs> hey. Are you getting the point? The only reason why I, I allowed us to pass through this part is to show you that eternal is not as important. In that phrase, eternal is not necessarily as important as life. The main thing is life. Say after me, life. life. The word... Uh, the word eternal there is um, is um, what does an adjective do again? You. Uh, so that that word eternal is quali qualitative, is to qualify. Actually, according to the scripture, the eternal life can be either qualitative or quantitative. And any time we speak about eternal life in this life, any time in Revival Hub, we don't necessarily speak about quantitative. Unfortunately, the evangelical part of the Christian faith, which is the foundation of many of us here, emphasized more on the quantitative dimension of eternal life. And we didn't really know that that life is not something to be enjoyed later but something that God gave us now as the only means through which we can get into dimensions of him. You cannot experience God and God things outside of his life. You cannot even understand God outside of his life. You cannot comprehend God outside of his life. You cannot possess God outside of his life. You cannot interact with God outside of his life. You cannot experience him outside of what? His life. You cannot even, you cannot comprehend him. Hey, do you know what it means to comprehend God? Show me John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. 
all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was what? Life. Remember, we are his life that is the main thing. But the life now, somehow, when he got into people, he became light. Uh -huh. Next verse. Can we read verse 5 together? One, two, ready, go. Let's read it again. One, two, ready, go. Remember, it was life. But when it came to you, it became light. And anybody that is not part of light lacks the ability to comprehend that. Are you seeing it? It takes life to comprehend light. It takes life. You are just telling story. Have you, have you argued with an unbeliever before? How many of you have you tried to argue with them? Yes. One of the signs that you are not born again or that you are out of touch with life is when you begin to argue spiritual things. When you start arguing spiritual things, arguing spiritual things, arguing spiritual. I heard that what is raining in Nigeria now is that people are now arguing miracle. <laughs> it is even, it is even. Yes, there, there is a, that one is certain. Did not even start today. It's actually in the Bible days. You know one of the strangest things? There is nothing that started new. Ah, the apostles met one guy that they said that the whole city thought he was the power of God. Meanwhile, he is using to manipulate people. For the fact that there is fake means that there is original. I don't know about you, but me, I've been personally healed by the power of God. Without somebody praying for me. Now, because the reason why many people doubt and do these things is because, maybe because of a man of God, man of God. That's why we teach you in such a way that you yourself, this, this kind of thing, especially healing and all, the, is not special, special as people think. The, this one I'm teaching you now about deeper life is actually what is special. But if it is healing and all those things, ah, healing that an unbeliever can receive, that means it's not that special. If it is special, God can't give it to an unbeliever. Those days on campus, so, the people that did real campus, a man of God said that he came to a crusade and they sent a courtist to come and shoot him. The courtist, meanwhile, had a very, he had an accident and his hands is no more working. His shoulder is no more working. As he was ministering in a healing service, the guy is still holding his equipment to, and he wants to wait for service to finish so that he can do his assignment as service is going on. God's benevolence and love and whatever is the reason and basis for healing is beyond even your feeling and even his agenda. To the point that as the healing was going on, God went and left other people that are well behaved. In fact, to receive healing and some of the things that is a byproduct of the sacrificial atonement of Christ is not because of your good behavior. In fact, many people don't receive because they think it's about their good behavior. It is not. It is not. It is because of what Jesus did and not what you did. In fact, if ever they find you doing anything, that's a disqualification. The only thing that qualifies you is not doing anything. If you have been struggling to receive your healing and you have done all the things that you think, maybe you have prayed, checked the scripture and all that, nothing is working. That means you are, there is something you are doing you are not supposed to do. Your prayer now is, Lord, where am I walking that I should not walk? Because once you are walking, God cannot walk. Because Jesus has already walked in his salvation. Any other walk is trying to make the walk that Jesus walked to look like rubbish. So he removes your, his hand and says, oh, yeah, walk now. As the guy was doing, he got healed. That's how he dropped his gun and became a very mighty pastor to you today. So that's God for you. Are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> so all those are RNG and other. But meanwhile, ah, that Nigeria is still existing today is what? 
How we still, how we take the shop for this Nigeria? How? How? Sometimes I will come outside and look at Nigerians and say, Kai, these people are strong. No matter what you do, they still maneuver and eat and survive and keep going on. It's a miracle. If it's in some countries, they will shut down. Nothing will happen. It's a miracle. It is. And many other things. When you start doubting spiritual things like this, it is one of, one of the greatest signs that life has started going away from you. So the Bible said, and the light shineth in darkness. And anything that is darkness lacks the ability to comprehend light. But remember, our focus was not on light. Our focus was what? Light. It was life that came into a people and became light. That means what people see is light. Light shines. Or rather, let me say, the scripture says light is that which makes what? Manifest. So it Light is in the region of manifestation. And because it's in the region of manifestation, that is what people can see, uh, relate with. Are you seeing it now? Now, meanwhile, the relatable things that is as a result of the shining light are founded upon what? A life that is inside. So without that life, there will be no light. And without that light, there will be no manifestation. This is one of the greatest lessons Jesus taught when he was here. Sometimes they will come and tell him, good master, Kai, the way you are behaving, I like your behavior. You are a very good, some of you, they have told you, you are well behaved, I like the way your lecturers, your work, they, you are so, such a nice guy, you are well behaved, that your parents trained you well, that, and all that, bro, strike for me in five minutes, and all that, that they trained you well, that you are so well behaved, I like the way you are quiet, I like, meanwhile, you know you, you are not quiet. <laughs> hmm? They asked Jesus, he said, no man is good except God. What is he trying to do, say? He's trying to say, yeah, I'm not saying I'm not good, but the good in me is as a result of the God in me. Are you getting the point? Uh -huh. It is the life in me that made me to shine. It is not as if I have an original light. If you are with me so far, say amen. amen. Take me back one scripture from where I came from. I wanted to show you two more things. Take me back Remember I was showing you people and telling you that there is a qualitative aspect of life, I would say eternal life, and there is a quantitative. And the quantitative is what we normally pray for in an evangel. You know that song we sang? I want to live eternal life. They are singing it as like, I want to, like I will... Something they will do in the future. Are you getting the point? Meanwhile, it is here now. It is actually for now. One of the greatest gifts that God gave, in fact, that's the greatest gift for man, is actually time. And the, you see, if you do something in time, you can correct it in time. If you do it outside of time, there is no correction. Are you getting the point? That's why, you know, have you heard where they tell people that you need to be born again, now you need to change your ways, now you need to... The reason is because this only can only be done in time. Once you step out of time, it is not possible to do many things or to correct your ways. You are already set. The path that a man is set on in time is the one he will continue in if he cross over to eternity. So there is an eternity in the context of existence that is quantitative. Let me say it again. Woman of God. There is an eternity in the context of existence that is quantitative. In that context, there is eternal judgment. So there are people that is going to stay in judgment for 
whatever eternity means. Are you following me now? In that same way, there is also a longevity in eternity. But that's not what we are talking about. What we are talking about is the quality of living. Say after me, the quality of living. The quality of experience. Let me just follow me. The quality of living. The quality of experience that God himself has in himself that he gave us through Jesus. Are you a billionaire, sister? Huh? <laughs> Good. Have you seen some pictures or videos or when they talk about billionaires? Did you notice that there is a quality of life they live that is not necessarily the same thing with the one you live? Are you getting the point? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You are the only one saying that Nigeria is scattered, that nobody can live in Nigeria, that I'm living. Hmm. Did you notice something? Am I the only one that noticed it? Very, very rich people, they don't ever leave this Nigeria. You know why? It's easier to live in Nigeria as a very big man. If you go abroad and do nonsense, they take you off. They don't care how much you have. But if you are in Nigeria, once you have money, you are above the law. You are above anything that happens is still workable. As long as there is money. Your crime in this Nigeria is absence of money. What's your crime? That's the real crime in this nation. That's the real crime. <laughs> it's true now. That's the real crime. Even your villagers know. Do you know, sometimes your villagers don't hate you. People don't hate you as much as you think. I'm telling you. They hate that you are poor. It's your poverty they hate. I'm, I'm not trying to promote all these things, but I'm trying to say that in this kind of environment, no matter how we say things are bad, there are people that is living a quality of life within the same environment. That is the invitation that Jesus is handing out to you. He advertised a quality of life by his cross. The scripture said, in the book of John. That the, that life, that life we are talking about is in him. In fact, the Bible said in the book of John chapter 10 verse 10. He said, I am come that thou might what? Have life. So I want to ask you a question. Chris Devono Small. I want to ask you a question. Why did Jesus come? I used to think it's for me to go to heaven. Just like many of you. And some people in this age think that Jesus came for them to have car. For them to have husband, have things. The reason why he came is for you to have life. That has been the original agenda. To have life. So God is willing to die and risk the possibilities of being left in show. Do you know the cry that he cried? Three times the scripture recorded the cry that Jesus cried in the underworld. One of the days I was teaching them some of the things that happened in the underworld. There was warfare there. And there was balancing of books there. They checked some things there. It was in the book of Psalms that a man cried through the voice of, of David and said, Thou will not allow my soul in hell. Neither will you allow my flesh to see corruption. It was Peter that echoed the same cry in the book of Acts chapter 2. That was when we found out that the scripture was not talking about David, that it was talking about Jesus himself. Peter speaking, he said that that thing cannot be David because that his sepulchre, his tomb, where they buried David, is still here with us. He pointed at it. He said, now David being a prophet and seeing ahead, 
prophesied. Prophesied that his soul, he will not be left in hell. So the disciples raised a cry from that day. He said, even death could not hold him captive. The life we advertise for you is the life that conquered death. We, we didn't know that there is something that can conquer death. So we said, let's sample life, the life of God. Let's sample. Because before the time Jesus died, no man has resurrected. Death was the end until Jesus appeared. Are you with me? Death has always been the end of everything and any man until Jesus appeared. When Jesus appeared on the scene, we found out that death is the beginning. For we in Christ, we began to live when we die. When do you begin to live? When you die. That is when Jesus began to live. And all that we come after him, we begin to live after they have met the same, the same structure, the cross. The apostles raised the cry. They said even death could not what? Hold him captive. That means that nobody can break away from the captivity of death. But on the day that Jesus went down, even hell could not hold him. Even death could not hold him. The Bible said in the book of Hebrews chapter 5, he said he raised a strong cry to him that is able to save him. The Bible said he was heard in that he cried. He feared rather. He feared. He was, he was, he was crying. His cry is not, eh, I'm about to die. His cry, this death, don't allow it to touch me. I don't want to be touched by death. I don't want it. He began to pray. That was the prayer point at Gethsemane. Deliver me from death. Deliver me from death. Deliver me from corruption. Deliver me from death. Deliver me. The, that shows you Jesus' greatest prayer point. What Jesus was afraid of, the greatest thing he was afraid of is what? Death and corruption. Death, corruption. The day Paul appeared on the scene, he became his body. Having dealt with, with the matter of death, we found out that there is still corruption in our members. So Paul began to cry. Corruption in his members, in his heart, even his body is weary. He said, is there a way I can be alone with my garment that is in heaven? You know, when he was making that statement, he said that God is able to do it that the same person that wrote it in Christ by the same same spirit with which are you getting it that he walks in our members so the authority the legal basis upon which we stand and ask God to walk is because Jesus has attained the same thing if Jesus have not died and resurrected who, who are you to talk about life it means that the life of God went to hell and could not come back. But there is hope. Even if a tree is cut down at the scent of life, it will come up. What water represents there is life. Go through the scripture. Water represents what? Life. At the scent. There is nothing that is too lost for life. The greatest lost case we have ever seen even Jesus was crying on the cross he said Eloi Eloi my father my father say after me my father my father, my father. you sent me and forgot me to die the man didn't say anything my father, is it not, you know the pain here is much you sent me why has thou forgotten do you know who is saying this thing? Jesus is saying a lie, a lie. When he looked upon death, casting his shadow, coming to grab him, he cried, a lie. Don't allow death to have me. The darkness and wickedness upon earth and all the eyes of existence is because we allow death to have us. 
when death walks it leaves behind it a desolate wilderness nothing will be useful after death has threaded a path if death comes upon the scene nothing can be left there but there is something that God introduced God said let me try my own life are you getting the point watch the suke came in contact with death and death subdued it are you following me so Satan was rejoicing that all manner of life that came in contact with death bowed. They now did a meeting in heaven and said, let's try our own life. When they tried their own life, they said, let's send it. So when, when Jesus said, Eli, Eli, and all that, they, they know the life that was there. When the life of God went to hell, the brilliance in his millimeters was so strong that all of hell bowed. Listen to me, let me tell you. Jesus conquered hell, conquered Satan, conquered sin, conquered all those things, all the demon, including Kelafalusi Obodon, Kelafankon, Ihanibo, all those things, whatever they are called. I don't know we appeared there. He, he has back seat. Look at you. He, he did not even follow. There are deities more powerful now. There are more powerful deities. They, they are in front. Even those in front lie down. They couldn't raise their head. When he rose up, Revelation said, who is able to open these seals? He said, the lamb has prevailed. He didn't say he was lucky. He warred. He said, if you think you are the one, come. He took on all of them, one after another. Flood all of them. Their life was burning. It was burning. It was burning. It was burning. Hell appeared. Their life burnt it. Death appeared. They burnt it. Sickness appeared. They what? He burnt it. Life. That's what I came to introduce to you. The greatest challenge we have now is that there is a means through which that life. Remember, Jesus was here upon the face of the earth. He said, I am the resurrection and life. Akatu. He has not died yet, but he said, I am what? That means as he's moving upon the face of the earth, he's carrying that life fully. Huh? Just as you, you are carrying the life. But there is a problem. How do we release the life? Are you seeing it now? So Jesus was carrying everything in total. If he's my mother, in total, everything complete. But there is a challenge. Just because you are carrying something doesn't mean it can be released. He took the cross to release the life. That means the possession of the life is different from the release of the life. Are you with me now? He took the cross. It was when Jesus went to the cross that the life was released. He was walking with them on the streets of Galilee. They never knew who he was. The life was not released. The powers and possibilities of that life did not give him. They were struggling with prayer. They can't ascend. Have you ever ascended in prayer before? You, you ascended. It was life that took you up. Have you ever prayed before? Ah, huh? Jesus. You prayed and prayed to some point and you enjoyed the prayer. How many of you here you have enjoyed beyond the fact that you prayed for something? Are you following me? Beyond the fact that you prayed for something, have you ever prayed before and you actually enjoyed the prayer? It is life. You are you are basking in life, and it it that is one of the greatest blessings that God has given us in this life, in this house, to bask in the life of God via the means of prayer. Sometimes you enter it and for 24 hours we are there. We don't want to stop. Prayer point has finished. God has done everything you are praying for yet. You still want to continue. That means there is something you are experiencing that cannot be captured in words. You don't want to live there. You want to tarry. Keep me here. It is an experience that you don't want to end. It's a journey that you don't want to cut short. You are being brought progressively into a plane that even words cannot capture. 
Something God himself enjoys. He knows you can enjoy it. Are you getting the point? It's like Nindo Garanya. It's in Nindo. Are you getting what I'm saying? When a big man that have seen life taste a food and tell you that this food is sweet, take it and eat. I think you should accept his opinion. When God gave you his life and said, enjoy, on Nindoke, he's speaking from his standpoint. He said, I've seen this thing. I've enjoyed this life. Take it, you will enjoy it. Are you now seeing it now? So I told the people that there are three levels of the revelation of eternal life. We can just shorten it to say eternal life deposition, eternal life the experience, and eternal life the destination. So there are people that got born again and now they are now rejoicing. I have the life of God and they are rejoicing. That's not, that's not the whole point. The whole point of having the life is so you join into the life. If you won't join into the life, then why is the life there? It is better that you did not come into the boundaries of the life. It is through the life that God possess you. When you get born again, you possess the life of God. But the plan of God is that by continued yieldedness to the protocol of life, God will possess you through that very life. If you are with me so far, say amen. amen. you to write this thing down in case I forget. The three proofs that something is living in a divinely spiritual way. The three proofs that something is living in a deep... So, you can write. Clap for yourself. The three proofs that something is living in a divinely spiritual way. Elijah, where is your... Three proofs that something is living in a divinely spiritual way. Let me... Hey, let me try and explain what I mean. Many years ago, I was part, I've been part of many prayer teams, many, over the years, over the years. While I was on campus, I was part of a prayer team. I can even say that I'm the leader, but I don't want to say, I don't like saying that I'm the leader of a prayer team. In my own opinion, a prayer team doesn't have a leader. Anybody that is ahead that day is what? The leader. Have you not noticed that there are some days we come, somebody will be the leader. The person with the life is the leader. Then anyway, there is a leader in the sense of administration. But in the sense of life, if you as the leader keep being full of life, you can keep leading. So we we had a lot of people that were members of that prayer team. We are not, we were not so many anyway. Sorry I brought that my mic. I almost behave like God's love. Sometimes God's love will put his mic on the belt. And I'm wondering, is that a new revelation? <laughs> huh? 
In fact, sometimes he will remove the mic like this. And I'm wondering what's happening. A sister was part of that, our prayer team. So, you need to understand this matter of prayer. You can master prayer by. In fact, one of, if you want to master prayer, one of the things you need to learn is that you have to, you have to give yourself to regimented sessions. You know what is regimented session? Like in the night, I will pray for 30 minutes. In the morning, I will pray for 30 minutes. In the afternoon, I will pray for 30 minutes. In the evening, I will pray for 30 minutes. That will make it two hours total. Am I correct? That is regimented. So it will mean that whether you feel like praying or you don't feel like praying, when is that time of prayer? You what? So this is a good thing that is a bad thing. Let me tell you why. If it is not because you are properly taught here, especially in an organic way, you can engage your Navy Jew for 21 days and God never came. You were never marked present according to the purposes of God that is working in your life. You were never marked present. So I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you the proof that the spiritual engagement that we are involved in has the life of God. That's the subtopic I gave you now. Are you seeing it now? When I fast, how do I know that there is life in it? When I pray, how do I know? What are the proofs that there is life in it? When I lead worship, when I'm worshiping, are you getting the point? When I'm teaching, how do I know? When I hear a teaching, how do I judge whether there is life in it? I hope you know that somebody can be ministering. The day I found this out, I was shocked. Many years ago, I, I found out that it's not, it's not all the time that people fell on, the, you know, fell on the ground that God was actually involved. If I say this, you'll be shocked. Sometimes people fell on the ground. It was death that was working. It's as bad as that. There is somebody that went out to move in power, trying to prove point to another pastor. What is working that time? Yes. You are now following me. And there are cases that is worse than that. Is the protocol, the principle. You remember the principle of life and death I introduced to you yesterday? Is principle. Nothing, maybe nothing happened immediate, manifested, but over time. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is the principle of death that is engaged. How do I know that my prayer life has started dying? How do I know that God has deserted me when life is absent? How do I know? How do I check whether there is life? You see, when I feel intoxicated, like, like, what was his name? Chukwebuka? Jidechuku? Where is he? Okay, he's down. Like, once we die, your brother is a highness man. There is nothing we can't. He's he's already used to getting high. Thank God there is highness in this kingdom. If not, he won't survive. Where is watcher? Huh? Not be weekend. Huh? I just a defender. Speak for yourself. Okay, you said what? I will hold you, Elijah. Don't worry. Don't worry. Any consequence? Now you go carry on. There are people that can't survive without highness, and we have a few of them in revival hall. The other day, Chibike wrote a treatise on highness. Wrote chapter one and chapter two. Highness. That one is normal here. That's one of our job too. Carry people is hey, people like Rehoboth cannot survive one minute in a place that you can't get high. It's not possible. 
How do we know that your prayer has life? How do we know that your smile has life? How do, yes. How do we know that your rebuke has life? I hope you know that sometimes <laughs> Oh. I hope you know you can rebuke somebody. It will be full of life. The person will change. In other instances where you should rebuke the person or show the person displeasure and you refuse, you did not communicate life. That means it's not all the time God is smiling. No. Sometimes he's not smiling. How do we know? Are you getting the point? Sometimes you rebuke people, they are edified. If you take it up as a pattern, you will one day rebuke people in the flesh and you will cast them down. Or if you are a pastor, your, your members will leave. I've, I've been warning, you know, I've been warning some young men sometimes. Tell them, don't rebuke people the way I rebuke sometimes. So. I have two things backing me up. Number one, life. Number two, discernment. There are sometimes times if you will do something expecting me to do anything or say, I will not say anything. I will just ignore you. You will be feeling, you even want me to rebuke you. I will not say anything. It's a brother that wanted me to rebuke him. I bought food for him. Got food for him. Got drink for him. Told him to sit down. We are just gisting about other things. I do not talk about that. But if he wants to leave, I say, don't leave. Sit here. Don't go. But we will not talk about that matter. Huh? Huh? You say what? It's not what? It's not rebuke. I'm happy. In fact, in some cases, it's not just to rebuke the person. Sometimes you do something... You are afraid, you are ashamed. I will come and tell you, my friend, leave that thing up. It's not anything. People have lost hundreds of thousands running to me and to me. I did not even, I did not even confront the matter at all. Then people have lied to me. I fought it in the end. You are not with me. Somebody lost almost millions. I did not say anything. Then the person lied. I pursued the matter. Pursued the matter. The person. Now nah, lie, I lie. I know key person. I said, I must see the end of this lie. The person is wondering, why did I take it this serious? Why am I and all that? He's a brother. You know him. Hmm? He's a brother. I'm sure you know him. You have pastored him. If we do other things, we will forget it. Once in life, I will pursue him, pursue him to his village. Pursue him, pursue him in his, pursue him everywhere. He will just give up and say, Daddy, I confess, I am wrong. I should have said it in the beginning. I was lying. Say, so now we can start. I want you to accept that you are lying. In my own opinion, that is my own opinion. You might not, you don't, don't take it from me. One of the greatest sin for me is lie. I believe if you can lie, you can kill. In brotherhood, if you can have trust among brothers, one of the things that must be consistent is a word of your mouth. If you say yes, let it be what? Yes. It's better that you are angry than that you lie, in my own opinion. As long as your anger doesn't hurt something, as long as it's short, according to scripture. But if you lie, we don't know where you are. We can't trust you. Turn our back, you stab us and kill us. If you me so far, say amen. There is a day that you laugh and you notice that the Holy Ghost left you. Is it not true? There is a day you laughed, you notice as if more joy came up. So we, how do you know? You need to know are you getting the point? So that you know when to laugh and when not to. I 
as a music minister, you need to learn when to grow some kind of songs. Hmm? If I check your phone now and see some songs, it's a proof that life, both you and life, has forsaken each other for long. Number one. When it is full of witness, number two. When it is full of judgment, number three. When it is full of substance or reality. Now, don't worry, I will come again. My brother, tell you okay. Huh? But two of you were here yesterday. Number one is what? Now, by witness, let me give you one or two examples of what I mean by witness. By witness, we have things like revelations, unction, knowings. These are these are witnesses. I believe if you have followed me long enough, I don't need to explain this so much. Am I correct? The need to explain myself so much on this might be because if you have listened to me, I've used these words several. Huh? Witness simply means that God authenticated it. That God what? Authenticated. Witness. The witness ministry of the kingdom of God is the only authenticating facility that we have. If we want to say that this is true, genuine, that this is truth, that this is the main thing, this. If we want to, there can be two things. You follow, look at what I'm saying. This person will worship, this person will worship. You know, Ken and Eber, what is the problem between their sacrifice? You know, that time when we were younger, I don't know about you, sir, because you look you look older than me, but I know you might not be by too much. But when I was younger in children's Sunday school class, they taught us that the problem with Ken's sacrifice was that you won't evil. Huh? Where? Huh? Yeah. You are welcome. You came to this place. Wow! Come and shake my hands. This, my brother, came all the way from Liberia to this place. You are welcome. Oh, and I said, move beyond it. I'd not say we can't go there, but I mean, I mean, I mean. What's that? What's that? Yes. When we were in children's Sunday school, they said that the problem with Ken's sacrifice, I don't know whether they taught it in Yoruba churches, that uh, weevils ate the yam. Is it the same thing they taught you? What did they say happened to his sacrifice? In your own place now. I, when do you get born again? Huh? 2018. But you are a Christian. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, it's true. It's Yaka. Oh, oh, oh. Where is the pastor's child? Where is Timilei? Timilei. Your father is a pastor now. What did they say happened to that yam? Spoilt yam. Spoilt yam. What spoilt it? Kokoro. <laughs> what, what is Kokoro? <laughs> so, what is Kokoro? Who can help me now? Oga Tayo, what is Kokoro? Eh? Uh -huh. Our own is actually Weevil. That thing, Eben Ataji. They say that the problem is that there is an insect that ate the yam, and that's why God did not accept it. Show me your Bible. Show me. 
show me where it is in your Bible. Are you getting what I'm saying? There must be a reason why you brought two sacrifices. There is no traceable reason in the natural why we, we reject any of them. But God rejected one and stood on it and even judged the other person. Ah. It took us experiences in the new covenant by the Holy Ghost to understand what I'm teaching you now. If you don't understand the ministry of witness, you will not know why God chooses between two things. In fact, you will look at them and say, God is unfair. That if I'm God, that this one has suffered now. Let me leave you. I think if I push this thing more, have you seen two people? Two people. One can fast for two days. One will fast 6 to 12. And God will answer 6 to 12. There must be a reason. Don't come and say, it is possible you fast 6 to 6 and there is no witness in your fasting. For whatever reason, there is absence of witness. It can be because of your motive. Can be whatever. There can be many reasons. Sometimes, you can fasting. You can do fasting. I have today. Bro, no be so. For somebody with labor in vain. Sometimes it's not fasting that pains. It's fasting without food to close it well. I'm telling you. A big man's fasting and a poor man's fasting is not the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I can tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Take it from me. I have done this thing for years. Take it from me. I've seen the high and the low. I've broken with Gary and sugar and I've broken with nothing. A brother was pitying me many years ago. He said, Pastor, you have finished fasting and you did not even, you said it's three days. You have continued to the fourth day. It's not as if you want to continue. It's just that there is nothing to break. We just continue the fasting. On the fourth day, if we don't see anything to break, we make it five. On the fifth, if we don't see anything to do, we make it what? Six. Until we see something to break. Ejigariye break a fasting. If it's when we're at it's all to only a break if fast. It doesn't work. But if he's big man, they will be fasting it. If the day God bless you, you will be fasting. It won't be showing in your body. I'm telling you. You even be fasting more than you used to fast. It won't show. You know why it won't show? One plate of balanced diet. One plate of well garnished meal prepared by the hand of a lovely wife. Speaking tongues. <laughs> hey. Hey. It will allow your body to know you are fasting. A man told my father many years ago when I was small, that time I've not gotten serious with fasting, I didn't hear the thing. Told my father that he's not fasting that is the problem, he's breaking well. That for him he breaks well. Breaks with a lot of fruits. Those days they tell me, if you are fasting, take fruits. I thought he was a good cancer. Let me tell you why. How can they when they go to the fruit say break? It is cheaper to eat food than to even do fruit fast. Fru real fruit fast is for big men. Oh. Go and ask them. Banana, 12, this thing. Huh? It's 2,000. Oh. If it's the one that own oh, case okay, so it's 2,000 plus. If you get that kind of money, you know how many plates it will multiply for you? 
Are you getting the point? Meanwhile, if he's big man, that's they use that one. Use Apple, use you know that kind of food you used to post on your WhatsApp now. Okay. Come here. Are you not the one that used to post those food on your WhatsApp? It was then. <laughs> so you have conquered food because your word will be used against you in judgment. You So if I bring a plate of noodles with egg, with green beans, with carrot, with all those things, with two chicken, and drop it, you won't be moved. <laughs> okay, go and sit down. Before you say something that will implicate your destiny. Are you not the one with the compass last Christmas? Somebody that has GPS tracking system. Listen to me. Something as simple as the way you broke your fast can make life escape from your sacrifice. So two sacrifices. Nothing physically wrong with either of them. But God rejected one and accepted the other. That means there must be a means of testing which sacrifice is true. Is it not true? Since there is no physical means, there must be a way to differentiate between the two things. Two people are praying. One is working more than the other. There is a reason why one is working more. There is a reason. Now, witness is the only way for us to authenticate the difference in things. So when God comes and he witnesses, there are two things. If he witnesses to this, we will now know that this is the one that is correct. Are you with me now? In the old covenant, a group of people came and they doubted the authority of the priestly ministry of Aaron. Did you remember? They said, let's settle the matter. That there is no need, that no human being can settle this matter. Is it not true, my sister? They said, bring your rods. Everybody brought their rods. They took it to the inside the glory and presence of God and dropped it there. Let the one that is true bought. That burden is what is called witness. The burden is life. Is it not life? That burden is the witness. The one that has the life of God is the one that the witness of God is upon. Are you seeing it now? So the way to prove that there is life is when there is witness in a thing. And I told you people that one sign of witness is revelation. If you come and engage something and God begins to show you more insight and revelation and understanding concerning that thing, that is one of the ways to know that you have touched life that day. Have you read your Bible before? You read five chapters, and it seems as if you are wasting your time. Am I the only one it has happened to? One day I was reading, 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 my head blocked. A brother sent me a message. Jesus. I think day before yesterday. We are still in bed bank, so he sent me a message. He said, Papa, 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 my head has blocked. He said, hey, I thought he was about to die. He said, He's, He blocked. He's no more understanding anything we are saying. It happens. Sometimes you'll be studying Bible, study. You read this, your Bible. Read one to three verse, come back. Read it again, come back. Read five, become confused. Roaming around, after two hours, you find out that you went back to the beginning. You now forced yourself and finished it so that they will not say you are lazy. How many of you, it has happened to you? Outside of that revelation, understanding, and insight, you can surely say that life was not made available that day. Are you following me now? 
So that is what I mean witness. The witness that God was in what you were doing is that revelation came. Revelation came. Knowings came. Unction. Remember I said witness. Revelation is a kind of witness. Knowing is a kind of witness. God will witness in your heart by a knowing. God can witness by a revelation. But the one that we are more conversant with is unction. What is unction? Unction is, for example, if God is the one that is here now, you say, Lord, there is a sister here that you want to improve her capacity to handle your presence. Are you seeing it now? Many times when you say it, if it is true, the person will experience the same thing. That is an unction that is at work. Is it not true? It's an unction. An unction can be a miraculous power, but it's not just that. If you are a teacher and a preacher, one of the signs that God sent you to teach a thing is that you will receive the unction to actually teach and preach. There is an unction to teach and preach. I hope you know there is an unction. It's a witness. It's the witness. So I said that the first sign that something is living in a divinely spiritual way is what? When it is what? Number two is what? What is judgment? Judgment are hebe like I now magibe and then I judged you. That's not what we mean by, by judgment. Huh? Are you who is a lawyer here? Where is Chiamania? Ba. Is this the way you dress to court? Why? Get a mic for her. Why won't you dress this way to court? Let, wait, let's hear from her. Is this the way you dress to court? Put, put the mic on. You must put the mic. Huh? Give him the mic. Who is that guy? Yes? No, that. Why won't you dress like this? Is it, are you not feeling nice? Are you not feeling free and okay and all that? Why won't you dress like this to court? It's not, it's not part of what we are required to. And I will be sanctioned. Watch. Huh? The main thing is not just that it's not part of it. It might not be part of but I just chose. My body, my life. <laughs> Say after me, my body, my, body. my life. My life. Whatever, I want, Whatever I want, I do with my body. You don't know anything. You don't know to whine. Once you see believers saying that in that, uh, as for me, my own Christianity, I, I don't, all this thing they are saying doesn't make sense it's to chain people, is to hold people down. That is, is my own Christianity and not, you, you have not appeared in any court. As it is physically, is even worse spiritually. There are doors that shut to you spiritually because you are not well clothed. I'm not the one saying it. Should I prove it? Show me that scripture. A man called a feast and invited many people to come to that feast. Show me, show me. You know, you know that scripture now? He invited many people. He was invited. He came in freely. He was at Luke 14. He was told to come freely. He entered freely. But you can't wear anything. Are you getting the point? He said, eh, my body, my, my life. My body, my choice my body, my life. It's not true. Do you want to appear in court? Do you want to be useful? Do you want to go deeper? Do you want to be relevant with God beyond the mountain level? Then you must pay attention to your garments. And I'm not talking just about physical garments. I'm talking about the garments that you wear in the spirit. Garments of purity, of holiness, of meekness, of love, all kinds of garments of faith in the spirit. You must pay attention to it. Because in my body, my you can't appear. In fact, in that place, 
when the king and when the king came in to see the guest he saw there was a man which had not on what he is he's wearing something but the problem is that we are doing wedding you want another garment let's see the next verse and he said unto him friend <laughs> you even called him friend how came is that in he that not having a wedding garment what did he answer there are many people that have sent me dreams and visions where they saw themselves naked and when they saw themselves they were ashamed and speechless you are like this next verse then said the king to the servants bind him what did he do now is <laughs> are you following me my sister you didn't wear clothes highest thing you do to me is to send me away is it not true what do you mean by buying me again what do you mean camel? What do you mean? Just tell me to go. Just tell me to go. Why are you binding me? That's what happens in the spirit. When you appear in place without properly being clothed, you will be bound from attending that place. Sometimes for two years, three years. I'm telling you. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm saying, you are probably a babe and you have not taught spiritual things. Even in ministry, there are judgments of anointings. An anointing has a judgment. A calling has a judgment. For John the Baptist, there is a kind of life that he needs to live. He cannot be doing it what every other man of God is doing. You come and say, why is God doing No, your calling demands that kind of judgment. Are you seeing it? For Samson, they told him, don't touch your hair. Don't touch your hair. That's what the judgment of his anointing. And because it's the judgment of his anointing, he did many things. He didn't touch the anointing. My father told me this thing when he was alive. He told me as long as he doesn't do three things, that nothing will happen to his anointing. He did many bad things. It didn't happen. Nothing happened. Something. But as soon as he touched the hair, the thing left. It took years before the hair grew back. That's exactly what happens to many men of God. They touched power, touched presence. God used them heavily. They violated the judgment of their calling and anointing. Are you seeing it? The thing left. Some of them did not bother to search it out. Some were sober and repentant. But they searched for it for some years before it came back again. Some, some of them, when he came back, he was not as strong as he used to be. If you are with me so far, say Amen. Have you not prayed before? You were enjoying God's presence, enjoying God's presence. You now did something, the thing stopped. And it didn't come again. It's not as if God is no more answering your prayer or something. But you know where the Holy Ghost just hug you and two of you stay there. You don't want to go. You, just, you have not experienced it in the last three years. You violated the judgment of your anointing and of your coming. You wore an improper garment and appeared. They banished you for years. I don't know how long. Are you getting what I'm saying? He said, bind him for doing what? For not properly dressed. Not doing anything. Just that he's not properly dressed. Bind him hand and foot. It's not only hand. Bind him what? Hand and foot. And what? Take him away. And cast his hair. Bind him hand and foot. Take him away. Cast him away into what outer darkness that's another story this place of outer darkness is a place of dryness one of these days we investigate it have you noticed that there is a season in your life that you experience dryness in your prayer life huh they sent you you experience more outer outer place of darkness dryness it's not as if you are no more born again or something but as i was telling you people that time one of the sisters, she went back and prayed for seven hours by her own strength and discipline. She came back and told me, Say, Pastor, I prayed for seven hours, but I didn't feel God. I prayed for seven hours, but I felt depressed. I prayed for seven hours, but I felt like leaving the corner. I prayed for seven hours, but I became more confused. What is happening? But I've prayed. Normally, when I pray like this, everything changes. Why does it look like if God is very far away from me and he doesn't want to come? Are you getting what I'm saying now? The judgments 
the judgments have been violated and the witness of God has departed one judgment that if you are with me so far say amen one judgment is discernment another one is righteousness not just righteousness as a nature judgment discernment you can appear in a situation and you notice that one of the proof of life that one of the proof that life is there is that you began to design I'm supposed to behave like this I'm supposed to behave like this I'm supposed to speak like this nobody taught you before that time you just designed it that's a proof that you are alive that's a proof that you are full of life are you following what I'm saying now are you with me if you are with me so far say amen if you are with me so far say amen, amen. finally day When it is full of substance or reality, I think that is the most common one. When there is no reality in something, it's like emptiness. What's the opposite of reality? Vanity. It is because of the purpose of experiencing reality that God set eternity in our hearts, according to the book of Ecclesiastes. The Bible said that God has set eternity in our heart. That means the only thing that can satisfy eternity is reality. I'm telling you. Let me give you an example. Let's assume God calls you now. I say go to the village. And calls another person. I say go to which foreign country do you like? Thailand. Uh -uh. Why do you like China? What happened to UK and US? You're a businessman, Jesus. Which foreign country do you like? England. That's UK now. London specifically, am I correct? Do you know you can go to London and make actually succeed according to human make all the money but you'll be very unsatisfied in fact one day in your life you wake up and you want to commit suicide another person went to the village to answer his calling or went to the village and he just did there are people in this neighborhood they have not left neighborhood they are living a better life than people that is in abroad you take abroad. Okay, no wonder. Yeah, the way you are answering me, you have experience. There are people that is abroad. It's not all abroad that is abroad. Oh. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Where is powerful Holy Ghost channel? Powerful Holy Ghost, come here. One day, I was coming back. I forgot in the nation I went to go and minister. But whichever nation it is, eh? I'm coming, I'll get to you. Whichever nation it is, it, it took us two flights. So we first landed in Ethiopia. Either Ethiopia or Kenya. I'm forgetting where we landed before we now came to Nigeria. When we came to that nation, my brother, if you see the number of Nigerians in that airport, I now started asking questions. I'm forgotten one one Asian country, one Arab country deported many Nigerians. Huh? I don't know the place. Many of them were wearing slippers, but true slippers. I'm telling you, some of them have not taken their bath, they have not combed their hair, they, they are looking tattered. They said they packed some of them out of prison and put them in that thing and was bringing them back. You are going out. There are people in this town, they have not gone abroad, but, but they ate of Faku today. Woko Kujuro Ibudaya. 
I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You are living a better life. I'm, and I'm talking from a natural point of view. How much more spiritual? A man can do ministry in the village the way I'm doing my own ministry in my village. And he's more fulfilled in the context of reality than somebody that is in the, in the UK that is doing ministry and flourished in numbers or even money. Yet, there is no satisfaction that is inside. Are you getting what I'm saying? It takes reality to satisfy. I want you to pray for one minute and ask God whatever it takes keep me in the place where I will keep experiencing your life that is what is the most important thing it is through the life that God ministers his reality it's through his life that he wastes away the powers of darkness if the life of God stays around you long enough, every darkness will disappear. Every walk of darkness, every power of witchcraft will bow if life is generated. When we give ourselves to priesthood, it is that peradventure we will, by that new, new testament calling and ministry, generate life enough for God to power his projects in our lives. To disconfict the activities of the enemy. To bring down demonic hegemony. To bring down the powers that has lasted in our life and in our territories for long. The more we pray, the more we generate life. The more Satan goes down in our territory. The more Satan goes down in Nigeria. More life. Not more church activity. What we need is more life in our activities. Not more activities. Not more programs not just conferences but more life in our conferences more life in our activities more life in our teachings more life in our ministry more life in our living more life in our worship more life in our prayer more life ask God for more life more life just by it's time to gather life gather life gather life Say after me, Lord, I gather life. I gather life. The journey is great. I gather life. I gather life. Some of you will get to travel. Some of you will get to stay around. Some of you will get to be sent on the mission field. You will only survive by the life that you have gathered. I gather life at the altar. I gather life. The altar is the place of life transactions. I gather life. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Anything you see in God means more. Don't ever stop. Stop means death in the spirit. Pause means death. Because the spirit of life is a moving spirit. He was no, he's no more where he was yesterday. He has moved. If you camp even the things that used to be good will become evil. Not because you did anything wrong, but because you camped. Next week we continue in our bed pangs. In two weeks time we'll have a prayer and prophetic conference. Amen. Amen. And then other programs that we have. You can cast your seed and offering. Please, we ask you to support us for this conference. Um, we are, as I told you people before, we are trusting God to, to shift to a bigger place down here. It has now become paramount. We labored to buy a land in the recent past, but the community at Obiofia Newich that we bought the land from, they are now, you know, having a little disagreement over it. But we trust her to settle it as soon as possible. The implication is that some of the plans that we have to 
hold some of our at least major conferences there it has been delayed now and some other things so we are still trusting God for there are some good informations we are hearing nonetheless however it happens within the for the prayer and prophetic conference ends we should have found a place either we found a hall or we found a place to at least lease sometimes we come for 50 days and people are standing and there is a lot of people that would have come that can't come because there is no there is no even place for overflow people can't even stand outside because there is no standing space and all that and there are certain infrastructural improvement that we cannot do in this place it has it has served us in Jesus name amen what am I forgetting what am I forgetting pastor huh? okay we are coming to a kitty from third to fourth of amen third to fourth of May at RCF Auditorium, Ekiti State University. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. You can cast your seed and offering. The Lord bless you. Greet five people before you leave. Akach will greet somebody. Your mother cannot run away. You run away too. Greet five people. Akach will. Akach will greet five people. Don't wait for them to greet you. Greet them. <laughs> 